coming up this week on The High Road with Keith Warren. There's a bad guy right there. This program is dedicated to the brave men and women of the United States military, past, present, and future. May God bless America. This is The High Road with Keith Warren. We are on a mission to unite all sportsmen. This week, The High Road takes us north to America's final frontier and the breathtaking beauty of Alaska. All right, uh, I'm sick as a dog. We are in Fairbanks, Alaska, and uh, we're gonna go on a sheep, moose, grizzly, black bear, wolf hunt the next few weeks with Castle Rock Outfitters. We're waiting on a bus to pick us up now, and I am sick as a dog, and the weather sucks. Hello, I'm Brent Keith with uh, Castle Rock Outfitters, owner and operator. We conduct hunts in the Alaska Range and interior of Alaska. We offer hunts for doll sheep, moose, caribou, interior grizzly bear, black bear, wolf, wolverine, and uh, offer some predator hunts in the wintertime as well. Joining me in the hunt is Tony Lind. Tony's an old hunting buddy of mine, and uh, he loves adventure. And so there's no question about it. This hunt in Alaska is going to be an adventure. It's a good life. It's a good life. Tony and I are on our way to the small town of Healy the home of Castle Rock Outfitters. We're in Healy. We've been, uh, we stayed at this bed and breakfast. These guys are here from Europe and we're waiting on uh, them to come pick us up for the plane. I've been sick for a couple of days and not feeling really good now, but uh, we'll take a plane ride in a minute, I hope. When you come into our camp, you'll take off by Super Cub. It'll be you, your rifle, and your gear, and you'll fly in for about a 30 to 35 minute flight in the main camp, where we'll meet you with the horses and pack you over to the cabins. The area I hunt is approximately 60 miles by 40 miles. I'll never be able to hunt at all. Just to keep the good trophy quality up, we'll spread all of our clients out throughout the area and just take a couple animals out of each camp. I get all kinds of hunters, but typically I'll get a hunter that's he's just retired, he's saved up for years for his adventure of a lifetime, and, and some of them even have a bucket list that they're working on. Uh, the country's great, they get here, and they immediately try to find a reason to come back up here and how to do it. We just landed a little while ago, rain starting, we got stuff loaded up and we're heading to camp right down that way. The High Road with Keith Warren, brought to you in part by Savage Arms, Diamond Archery, Record Rack Deer Feeds, Bad Boy Multi-Terrain Vehicles and Bad Boy Mowers, and New Supercharged Scent Killer by Wildlife Research Center, beyond 99%. Join the High Road online at KeithWarren.net. You're watching The High Road with Keith Warren. Their first morning at camp, the weather continued to be lousy and, well, 
I still felt as lousy as the weather. We all decided just to take it easy that first day. And it gave me time to think back on my first adventure with Brent back in 2003. Started watching Keith Warren on his hunting and fishing adventure show years ago and uh, watched and saw the passion that he had for, for his way of life, hunting, fishing, and all that stuff. And uh, called him up one day and offered him a sheep hunt. And he took the bait and showed up. And he introduced himself on the telephone and says, get on my website. So we, I went on his website and wow, I mean, he's got, this is like a bucket list of of outfitters, you know, and he says, I want to take you on a sheep hunt. I'd never been on a sheep hunt, at least a doll sheep hunt. I've been applying for sheep tags all over the West for you know, a better part of 15 years now. I'm still waiting to get one. But I couldn't believe that Brent was asking me to come up and go on a sheep hunt. So I wasn't uh, actually in good enough shape to make the hunt, but Brent was like a, a personal trainer. I mean, he pushed me and pushed me and pushed me to do, to dig down into the core and the the deal about hunting in Alaska is that you have to be prepared physically, there's no doubt about it. But if you're not prepared mentally to handle it, you're not gonna make the hunt because it's tough. I mean, it's not an easy hunt. I should have started working out for this hunt when I graduated from high school. By mid-morning, Brent and I had snuck our way up onto a ridge and spotted a band of rams about two miles away on the other side of the canyon. After a long glassing session, Brent determined that there were at least two legal rams in the band, and it was now or never. If we were gonna make a run at them, we needed to do it now. Boy, I was glad to see those sheep. And I have to admit, I was starting to question my commitment to this sheep hunt. I'm telling you, Brent Keith is supernatural. Please. Dog, you're killing me, man. I'm getting mad at him now. Down below is probably 100 yards elevation wise. Still about 350, 400. Okay, there's two, two ewes and a on that one green patch. And down below it, we're in good shape to win the last and out past him. So they still bet it down. I can see down they got two ewes. The second one, right? Second one. Broadside? Yep. Walking away from us now. You go. On the top? Yep. Got him. Take him again. Take him again. Hold it. There's one calling into him. Hold it. OK, he's out of sight. He's out of right. sight. I hit him, didn't I? Yeah, you hit him. OK. Hold this. All right, let's just stay put. Alright, okay, okay, now let's just watch the Is that right there is the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. I know I have a downed doll sheep and to see a rainbow like that. That's beautiful. We punished him proper like up and down those mountains and he went home with a beautiful doll sheep. And, and at that point when we left each other's company there, he he wanted to come back on a moose hunt, and, and we finally put it together. It's time for viewer feedback, brought to you by Bad Boy Multi-Terrain Vehicles and Bad Boy Mowers. Grant Peterson is stationed in Iraq in the U.S. Army. He says, Mr. Warren, I want to thank you for your unwavering support of the United States military as the war seems to go on and on. It seems like many Americans have unfortunately forgotten that there is even a war going on. Most of the guys in my unit are outdoorsmen and we've watched your show for years. Now, even in Iraq, we never miss an episode thanks to you now having your show streaming on your website. Keep up the good work on behalf of all the guys in my unit. We wish you the best in all you do. Grant, thank you and thanks to all the guys in your unit. Thanks to all the people that are in uniform and ever been in uniform for your service to our country. That's, that's first. Thanks for a flattering email. That's awesome. But you bring up a good point. Uh, People that are in the military in Afghanistan, shoot, over in, in South Korea. I mean, we get emails from soldiers all the time that watch us online. At KeithWarren.net, we have all of our episodes on there, and they're commercial free. And so I want to thank all the people in the military for, for your service. But uh, I want to encourage everybody, if you want to watch our show online, 
You can do it 24-7. All you need to do is go to our website. Our website address is keithwarren.net. The High Road with Keith Warren, brought to you in part by Glock, Reconix Game Cameras, Chaffee Pasture in a Bag, Valley View Whitetails, Shadow Hunter Blinds, and Bird Coyotes Luminox. All High Road programs are available on demand for free 24-7 at KeithWarren.net. You're watching The High Road with Keith Warren. First couple of days Keith and Tony showed up at camp. It was miserable, rainy, windy, and to kick it all off, Keith was sick. Being the generous person he is, he passed it around to all of us. And I basically stayed in the sleeping bag and tried to get feeling better, but then everybody else started catching what I had. I used this opportunity to reminisce on a trip that Tony and I had taken to Alaska back in February on a predator hunt. The predator hunts I offer start up in November. Um, it's an it's a all-inclusive hunt. We pick them up in Fairbanks, put them up in a hotel before we head out the next day, and I have them purchase a hunting and trapping license. That way we can put traps on the ground, snares, as well as do some spot and stock and some calling for the predators. Welcome to Alaska. It is uh, about the middle of February, and we are fixing to take about a 60-mile ride up the Wolf River where we're going after predators. They're packing up now and we got a long snowmobile right ahead of us and the weather is perfect. And we'll be traveling by snow machine and I have about 110 miles of trap line. It's a real good hunt. We get to cover a lot of good ground. We're real lucky we'll get some good weather, some good northern lights and we'll keep running those all the way up into the end of March. We made a long ride up here. We're up in the Wood River up in a cabin and it, uh, it's pretty primitive. It's below zero outside. It's absolutely beautiful. There is no place I'd rather be than right here. One of the big reasons I trap is my own predator control, if you will, and it just keeps the balance of population between the predators and the ungulates. My best set that I utilize for trapping wolves is the Alaska Number no. 9 Manning Trap. It's a nine inch spread jaw, and I like the leg holds more than the snares. Basically what we do is we use coyote urine, or we'll find a urine set that the, the wolves are using already and we'll go ahead and put those in. I'll give instructions to the client how to put that set in, and then after that, they'll take over from there. I'll give them a hand, point them in the right direction, correct something, or, and sometimes I even learn from a client once in a while. The best way to trap the lynx is, is get a good attractor, and we utilize a lot of different things, like ptarmigan wing, grouse wing, goose wing, just something that flutters out there in the wind and, and collects moonlight in the evenings, and it's the old adage, curiosity got the cat. Works really well. The traps that Brent uses uh, catch all different kinds of animals, and uh, he's primarily going after lynx, wolf, and, uh, and fox. And here's a set right here with a nice lynx in it. It's a nice mature animal, and uh, he's got some beautiful fur on him. As far as the predator hunts go, the client takes home whatever he traps or shoots. The client's fur will be professionally handled. I'll skin it. I will put it in taxidermy quality. When it's all said and done, it'll be salted and then frozen on top of that, sealed by fish and game, and then shipped to the client when it's all sealed and done. The first few days of our predator hunt, we'll go out on the snow machine, we'll get some sets set that'll work 24 seven for us. And then we'll start utilizing the spot and stock and doing some calling. Basically what I'll do is I'll set up on a high point and I use a Fox Pro digital collar and I'll set that up down below and then we'll get set up We usually wait 20 minutes, let the, the noise calm down, and, and then we'll start working that call. At first, the calling was slow going, but we knew the animals were here. I had sent several Reconix game cameras to Brent, and he had set them up all along his trap line. And the photos, well, they showed a lot of lynx in the area, and even a big wolf. But for several days, we just weren't seeing anything on the ground. Then finally, Brent spotted this silver fox and gave Tony the go-ahead to take a shot. How far is it, Brent? 240 yards, Tony. Oh, 
Got him. Good shot, Tony. 240 yards, a uh, pretty easy shot with this little old gun here, but I'm anxious to get up there and see him. Most fox are about 10, 15 pounds at the heaviest. Their diet consists of field mice, voles, ptarmigan, grouse, and they get a hold of a rabbit, and that's a special treat. There are several different color phases of the fox. By far, the prettiest is the silver fox. On the final evening, we were headed back to camp when we came across a big surprise in one of Brent's snares. Is this the way you normally find them? Yeah, a lot of times we'll, they'll fight a little bit more, but you can see his good quick kill. He hit it pretty hard and sucked it up real tight, and uh, that was it. It just, just kills perfect. them like that? Yeah, just that snare sucks right down tight, and, and within two minutes, they're done. Well, he done. hadn't been dead long. I mean, he's still kind of soft, but look at it. Look at the size of his melon. <laughs> That's a big wolf. It's, it's a, a big wolf. wolf. It's got to be a male, don't you think? That's a male, big male. Yep, he's a boy. Okay. <laughs> Look at those teeth, too. Yeah, that's a Man, beautiful. what an awesome animal. Yeah, So when, when folks come up with you on, on a predator hunt like this, you, uh, I mean, we've been trying like crazy to call, and we yep. haven't had much luck, obviously, but uh, but we've we've seen a, I mean, we've seen a ton of moose, a ton of sheep, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know how many lynx in the, in the traps, huh? A I bunch. Mean, a bunch, and now got a wolf. Folks, Brent Keith runs Castle Rock Outfitters out of Healy, Alaska and uh, I've been sheep hunting with him. Tony and I are going to be back here this coming fall. We're going to do sheep, moose, and grizzly and if y'all want more information on coming up here hunting predators like this or hunting big game uh, with Brent, all you got to do is give him a holler and we'll have a direct link off of our website to his website. And once again, you're supernatural. I appreciate you. <laughs> the High Road with Keith Warren brought to you in part by Oilfield Camo iHuntAmerica.com, BSA Optics, Gamo Air Guns, and Jardin Consumer Solutions, makers of the Game Saver. Keep up with Keith as he continues on the high road and become eligible to win some great prizes by becoming a fan on our Facebook page. On the predator hunt with Keith and Tony, Keith had uh, brought his Glock with him. And we had one slow day there and, and plenty of rabbits and hares running around and he decided to just see if he could wear them out with that thing. We had a heck of a good time. We got some unusually warm weather. It's about uh, probably about 35 degrees right now. A lot of snow on the ground and we're gonna go out and have some fun. I've got some hollow point bullets inside my Glock. This is a 10 millimeter. And there's a lot of snowshoe hairs here, and we're going to use those for bait. Keith brought his Glock 10 millimeter up here, and that's the same exact gun that I use. And I use it on my hunts just for self-defense. Uh, from grizzly bears, really pissed off moose. I carry it in the field uh, just for self-protection against any animals, or uh, uh, when I'm traveling, I carry it for self-defense as well. Taking several animals with them, including a caribou, and uh, performed great. Love it. All right, here we go, fellas. Woo -hoo -hoo! He took one last hop. Hunting with a Glock. You know, Glocks are used primarily by 99% of the people in the country for personal defense, and you can't do any better than that. That's a 10 millimeter. And uh, I carry it with me hunting, and the reason why I do is because in many cases I can get to practice on live moving targets. And uh, this guy right here, it's winter time and they're really good to eat. Ooh. Oh, there's a lot of rabbit sun here. Ooh. All right, boys, here we go. All right, there's another one. So far, I'm 100%. Yeah, this evening we're gonna have us some rabbit enchiladas and, and uh, all the other parts that we're not eating, we're using for lynx bait. He's right there. Got him. Over the years, I've had a lot of guys come up here, but I've never seen anybody so mad at these rabbits as Keith Warren. I can honestly say that right there makes this officially the prettiest place I've ever rabbit hunted in. On the other side of that mountain range is Denali National Park. There's a rabbit sign all over the place. 
I guess uh, sounds like on this mountain about what it sounded like when our guys showed up in Iraq and Afghanistan to take care of the bad guys. They wound up, showed up, and those terrorists were terrorized by the best guys on earth. There's a bad guy right there. Another bad guy. Good, this. All right. While you're out there and you see somebody in the service, somebody who's ever been in our military and served our country and sacrificed, don't thank you. Because if it wasn't for their sacrifice, we would not have this gorgeous country that we call America. So make sure and take the time and thank them. And make sure and defend your Second Amendment rights too. The rain finally stopped. And we are stir crazy. And we'd be crazy to go up on the mountain because the clouds are way, way down low. So we're just gonna sit it out and hopefully in the morning, the clouds will be gone and we can start the hunt. But we're having a good time anyway. Be sure to stay tuned because the great Alaskan adventure will continue on next week's show. For more information on hunting opportunities with Castle Rock Outfitters, give my friend Brent Keith a call at 907-683-1250 or you can visit castlerockoutfitters.com. Just one of the things that makes our country great is the freedom of private land ownership. And to celebrate that, we have created a brand new program called Ranch Properties TV that airs right here on the Pursuit Channel. To find out more about Ranch Properties TV, log on to ranchpropertiestv.com. If you have a question, comment, or story you'd like to see on the high road, let us hear from you online at keithwarren.net. Closed captioning is brought to you by new supercharged scent killer by Wildlife Research Center. Beyond 99%.